Okay. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our remote writing workshop. For those of you who are at the beginning of the writing process, we thought it would be super helpful to provide a self-editing cheat sheet. This will help you avoid the most common mistakes writers make, and it was meant to be a quick overview and a checklist of things that you should keep in mind as you write. So, Erin, what's the goal of a self-editing cheat sheet? Well, it, it, I think it's always a good idea to hire an editor when you've completed your manuscript, um, because even editors know that we need editors. And your writing will be much stronger overall if you're aware of some common traps that what writers fall into, and especially first-time authors. So learning to self-edit as you write, I think, is essential for not only making the writing you're working on at the moment stronger, but for growing overall as a writer. And if you wait for an editor or another reader to point out any of your you know, fatal flaws after you've finished your rough draft or, God forbid, after the book is published, those major issues are much, much harder to address. And so the more you know about writing in general and what makes your writing strong and compelling, the more engaging and successful your books and your future writing career will be. Awesome. Okay. So let's start with the basics. What are some editing rules and guidelines that everybody should follow? I think first, please, please brush up on basic grammar. And if your grammar is simply terrible, take a class, get to know the Chicago Manual of Style, or hire a copy editor. And it's fine to have some mistakes, uh, but atrocious grammar, it, it's just not professional. Um, it's a complete myth that you need a master's in fine arts to be a successful writer, but you really do need to get a handle on the basics. So know the differences between there, there, and there, it's and it's, your and your, and if you don't know what I'm talking about there, go brush up on your grammar skills. Uh, because, you know, spell check is only gonna get you so far. Uh, another thing is keep your total word count in mind before you begin. Um, some basic guidelines, young adults should be around 45,000 words. Uh, business books are usually between 50,000 to 80,000 words, commercial fiction, ideally, 65,000 to 90,000 words. Really keep in mind that when you go above the 100,000 word barrier, you should be writing historical fiction, the next Harry Potter, or piecing together something huge and historical like the fall of the Roman Empire. Uh, literary fiction, you sometimes get a pass for longer links, but honestly, if you can't get it down to under 100,000 words, you've probably got an issue. Uh, and the reason for this is keep in mind, paper costs money. Higher production costs for you and your publishing house equal higher book prices for the consumer, which means fewer books sold. This means you make less money. Also, when you keep it shorter, it usually means that you streamline your content, so it's gonna be stronger in general. So, win-win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely agree with that. And I love how you pointed out spell check can only get you so far <laughs> because I have seen Word docs and I've seen a uh, spell check on either, you know, just, um, on your computer or in a document online, they still make mistakes with basic grammar and I've caught it a couple times so you can't rely solely on that. Definitely. And working in a publishing house, we have, you know, we get in our manuscripts and then we have editors who read it, then we have copy editors, and then we have two rounds of proofreading. And that's a whole lot of eyes and there's still at the very end some grammatical mistakes. So yes, it's very important to know your grammar from the beginning. Yeah, oh. definitely agree. Okay, let's get into content and style. What are some of the most important things a writer should remember? One of the big ones, uh, always remember the motto, show versus tell. And you might've heard about this. This is practically the number one rule of writing and it's true for both fiction and nonfiction. And you can Google this one and there are tons of examples about what show versus tell means. Showing is using description and action to help the reader experience the story. And telling is when the author summarizes or just simply tells the reader what's happening. And showing is much more compelling and draws the reader into your story. And telling keeps the reader at arm's length. So for example, in fiction, avoid telling lines such as, he was sad, because that kind of line doesn't engage the reader at all. Instead, you wanna show the character's actions and gestures and expressions and dialogue that show he's sad. So that's a very basic example. And if you do that effectively, you will never ever have to tell the reader what a character is feeling because you're gonna show it. And now for nonfiction, telling the reader what to believe isn't nearly as effective as showing your thesis through compelling examples and research. Um, 
Another good uh, rule to establish is your point of view. So figure this out from the very beginning and stick to it. You never want to um, head jump between characters' perspectives within scenes because this is very jarring for the reader. They don't know whose perspective they're in if you do this. So you want to stick to one point of view for the entire book or at least for each chapter. Now, writing in the omniscient point of view can be done, and that's when you write from the point of view of an all-knowing narrator, and you can give everyone's perspective, but this is incredibly hard to do. Yes, Hemingway did it. And if you think you're up there with Hemingway, feel free. But for most of us, we should think long and very hard before making that choice because it's extremely difficult to do. So those are a few basics. Got it, love it, okay. What are some basic questions that writers can ask as they self-edit? Um, some quick questions are, content-wise, do I have enough description or too much for both character and settings? Are my story and character arcs solid? Uh, if you're writing nonfiction, make sure your thesis is supported with sufficient research and content. Uh, ask yourself if you've provided enough unique material for your reader to make the book stand out from all the other titles out there. That's Hook that we've talked about. Uh, another great aspect to focus on before you begin writing is dialogue. Ask if your characters have distinctive voices. Once you know what you want your characters to say, really work on how they say each line of dialogue. Make each line a character says unique and reflective of your character's personalities. A great way to do this is to read your dialogue out loud to make sure it sounds natural versus kind of awkward and stilted. Sometimes when you write something on paper and then you say it aloud, it, it sounds a little odd. It doesn't sound as natural when you're saying it. Also ask if your narrative voice for both fiction and nonfiction is engaging because you definitely don't want to bore your reader to death. You want to give them a reason to keep turning the pages. Another easy one to keep an eye out for is to, you wanna avoid being repetitious. Keep an eye out if you're using certain words or phrases too much. I think even just in our daily lives, we, turn, we, we tend to use phrases we like a lot and we do that the same in our writing. So keep an eye out for that and just make sure you're not using them too often or starting sentences with the same words or phrases and uh, delete those if it's happening. Awesome, okay, great. So question five. If writers learn to self-edit really well, can they forego hiring an editor when all is said and done? <laughs> you probably know my answer to this one. <laughs> I always urge uh, writers to get a fresh set of eyes uh, to take a look at their work, um, even if you become super proficient at self-editing, because we become so close to our work that we just can't see errors and missing elements that are right in front of our faces. You literally will just gloss over things. Sometimes I tell writers to read your sentences backwards and then you'll start catching errors because once you start reading them forward your mind just goes over you don't see what you're meant to see you don't see those mistakes so either hire an editor or get feedback from a writer's group or a colleague who is not worried about hurting your feelings because you want honest feedback so don't ask your mom don't ask your best friend. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, it's it's interesting because uh, we're so, you know, we're so close to our writing and we know our own voice so well that even when we're self-editing and we see the mistakes we're making, kind of like you said with phrases, we don't really notice the phrases that we say on a day-to-day -day basis and we don't notice how much we say them, that it can reflect in your writing. But for us reading them, it may not seem like it's overdone, but to someone else, it may seem like, why, why are you saying this phrase so much? Right. What? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's when you bring in a fresh set of eyes, someone who's never seen it before and, you know, is going in blind and all of these things pop out at them immediately. So that's why it's so helpful. Got it. Okay. All right, Erin, what's our creative exercise for the week? Okay, so take a few pages of something you've written, anything, and self-edit using all or some of the items that we've covered today. So go through this checklist, uh, make sure you're on track before you continue writing. And your writing will be stronger for it in what you're writing now and also as you continue writing in the future. Awesome. Amazing advice as always, Erin. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in again to our remote writing workshop. We hope that you guys have taken a bunch away from these uh, workshops and really applied it to your writing. We really hope this has helped you kind of get in tune with your creative process. Make sure you're letting us know how you like these videos, what you'd like to see, um, what you'd like to see more of, how you're liking the 
the creative processes. We've seen people share with us their creative exercises. We love it. Keep it coming. Um, and we will see you guys next time. All right. Bye guys. Bye.